How to build a preventive maintenance program from scratch. I want to introduce you by saying this is the first episode of our new series called MX Masterclass. So this new series is really based and dedicated to share game-changing strategies and insights to help you optimize your maintenance operations, to enhance your asset reliability, and to drive excellence across your organization. The first one, which to me should be the priority for everybody. Whenever we talk about operations, safety should always be at the top of the list. The second one is increasing equipment lifetime. The third one is reducing cost. Last but not least, increase productivity. So moving on to choosing the right KPIs, because when we start creating a PM programs, one thing that is very important is to set some goals, set some objectives completing a certain amount of PM work orders per week. We could have a non-time PM completion of a certain percentage as well. So we want to make sure that not only we perform our PMs, but we also perform them on time. Increasing our preventive to reactive work order ratio by a certain amount. Getting our MTBF, so mean time between failures, up to a certain amount of hours. So again, this is something that is directly linked to a good PM program. So whenever you have some good PMs in place, your MTBF should be going up. And so this is why this is also a smart objective to have. And last but not least, going a little bit out of the box here, if you are using a CMMS, hopefully this is what you're doing right now, or this is a plan that you have, tracking a certain amount of labor hours per week as well. So you want to make sure that your team is using the system and that they are tracking everything that, or a, a good portion of what they are doing on their week to week. Developing a strategic approach. Whenever we start with building a PM program, of course, we don't want to jump left and right and try to solve everything in one day. This is not something that is realistic. I'll introduce you to two concepts. The first one is the PDCA approach. So plan, do, check, and act. This is a cycle that goes on and on. It's a wheel. It's it's part of a continuous improvement. You want to make sure that you set up your goals. This is what we talked about, you know, define your smart objectives, your your KPIs. Uh, Do. So this is really implementing the solution. So starting to complete your, your PMs, performing the work, and then we get to the third step, which is to check. So this is where we take a quick pause, we take a step back and we evaluate, okay, this is where we want it to be. This is where we're at now. Moving on to step four, to act, what can we do to readjust? And then we just do the cycle over and over again. So this is a great notion to keep in mind. Keep that in your back pocket, the PDCA approach. The second one is the crawl, walk, run approach. Um, This is something that... Every time I implement a site, this is something that I bring back, the crawl, walk, run approach. We cannot expect to have a perfect maintenance program from day one. This is just absolutely non reasonable We want to make sure that we start with the basics. We start simple, and then slowly we introduce and we improve our program. Moving on to optimizing your PM program. So if we take a step back and we look at the PDCA, so the plan, do, check, and act, Tracking our KPIs right here. We want to make sure that we evaluate where we are versus where we should be or where we need to be. And then we can start moving forward again and start another cycle of the PDCA with adding some equipment. So we start with the most critical equipment. Make sure to follow the criticality analysis to understand your program. The third one, optimizing your procedures and the SOPs. As we said previously, make sure to review your data The fourth one in terms of the walking portion here is the elevate your CMMS usage. Tracking parts consumption is something that is very important. And a lot of the cost associated to maintenance comes from parts replacement. The second thing is optimizing your workload balancing. So using a CMMS will allow you to see how many hours, I should say, are we spending per week on the different PMs that we perform. How many hours are we spending inspecting or just performing PMs on one specific piece of equipment in the last month? So all of this data will help you really just balance your workload. Now the running portion, uh, this is where you supercharge your program uh, and you make sure that it's as good as it can be. And so it's time to make sure that we update our goals. And at this point, 
we can be ambitious. We can say, okay, so far, everything worked well. Let's look in the future. Let's set ourselves for something that is ambitious in terms of goals. Make sure that you roll out to all of your equipment or that you include all of the departments as well that you have in your company. And we want to make sure that everything is covered by the PM program. Keep on optimizing your procedures or your SOPs. At this point, you just say, okay, well, you know, again, everything's going well. We have this kind of generic procedure for the inspection of this type of equipment. We can start into making some that are equipment specific as well. The second point here is to look into condition-based maintenance. Now we can start looking into, okay, well, maybe we'll just base ourselves out of condition, looking into, you know, introducing meters in there. And this also leads us to when we go into integrations. So the IoT sensors, where you have some sensors connected to your equipment for anything from temperature, anything from vibrations, I mean, you name it, anything that you might track on your equipment that can give you those conditions that are needed to say, okay, I need to go and inspect the equipment because based on data history, based on the equipment itself, there will be a failure soon or there is something that needs to be fixed. The last thing in terms of you know looking to integration, I said that the CMMS is a great place to centralize your information for tracking your assets, tracking your PMs, keeping your procedures. But then we want to make sure that you connect all of your system together as well. The last section of the presentation is leveraging technology. Why should you use a CMMS? Again, I have four main points to try to convince you if you're not already convinced that you should be utilizing a CMMS for your preventive maintenance program. The first one is easily accessible S3. Whenever you're on the CMMS, you're two clicks away from years and years of maintenance records. This is very powerful. The second thing is it's easy to keep track of failed inspection. The third one, I talked a little bit about it, but investigating recurring issues, you can quickly see this specific issue. Did it happen one time in the last year? Did it happen 10 times? Did it happen 100 times? And this is where when you have the data, you can easily say, okay, well, Let's push the investigation. The second thing, centralizing information. I already talked about it, but no more paper, no more spreadsheets. Everything lives within the CMMS. This is the ultimate goal. Reporting in KPIs tracking, CMMS will come with pre-built comprehensive report, hopefully. The important KPIs are already predefined. You don't need to create anything. Everything comes out of the box. It's available to you. It's easy to track them on a week-to-week basis or on a month-to-month. And last but not least, when you have your data in the system, the most critical portion for you know, your operations for the business is making data-driven decisions. When you look at your CapEx and you're going to just invest in a big project, you don't want to do it based on gut feelings. You want to have data to back it up, and this is what the CMMS will provide you. And finally, well, a CMMS can do so much more. I mean, it's the art of the industry 4.0, big buzzwords in the last couple of years, but that's the truth. The CMMS will also allow you to be AI ready for your data foundation. So we see the AI dating being more and more present all around us in a day-to-day basis. Having a CMMS, having the data live in there really makes you ready for what's to come. Quick slide also to showcase, you know, maintain edge, the reason why we're number one in the industry. Well, this is a survey that was conducted for our customers in last year. So in 2023, so everything that we touched on really reducing downtime, increasing overall equipment effectiveness. So the OEE, improving your PM percentage. So the completion of your PMs, saving on parts inventory costs, increasing inspection completed on time, even saving managers hours per week of just filling out worksheets or things like that. These are all great reasons why maintenance is there. We are the leader in the industry and why I suggest that you know you take a look if you haven't already uh, looked into maintenance. Now for a summary, so we talked about creating a PM program from scratch. So what we discussed to make this successful, choose smart KPIs. So we said specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. 
We said that we want to have a strategy. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't try to do everything at once. Don't try to do it all in a day. It won't work. Have short, mid, and long-term goals. Build your foundation. Start simple. Start with your critical assets and with basic procedures and SOPs. Optimize your PM plan. Review your goals. Review where you are, what, when, and how you do your inspection. And last but not least, leverage technology. Use a CMMS. Use MaintainX. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.